Hey everyone, Nick D'Albertis here teaching you financial modeling. Today we're going to be covering scenario analysis in Python. This is part of our lecture series on probabilistic modeling. So previously we already covered the intro to scenario modeling and we also covered how to complete that in Excel. So now we're moving on to just the Python side of the implementation. And for that, um, when looking at internal scenario analysis, uh, you're mainly just setting it up within the core model so that you can have these different cases for the inputs, and then you're going to take the expected value across those cases to come up with the new inputs for your model. So, uh, same kind of process as Excel conceptually. Just here, we would be completing that using a dictionary and sum, looping over the dictionary and summing uh, the different values to take the expected value, or we could do that in a data frame as well. And then looking at external scenario analysis, so assuming with the external setup that uh, we have one function that we can use to run the entire model, then you just uh, set up your different cases and you loop through the different cases. You call the model function each time with that input case. Keep the outputs associated with those inputs. Uh, and then you'll have the results for each case. And you can go a step further to also assign probabilities to those cases so that you can take an expected value and get an expected result from the scenario analysis. So an important thing to note for external scenario analysis, just like uh, sensitivity analysis and any other extension we're making to the core Python model, you do have to set your model up in a way that it's going to be able to be extended. Uh, so that means that basically everything should be in functions and the functions should call each other in order to get the various pieces of information and you shouldn't have uh, calculations going on outside in the cells, outside of functions, because those are not going to be able to properly adapt when you pass in the new data for the scenario or sensitivity analysis, Monte Carlo simulation, any of these other, any of the extensions we're looking at for our models. So if you were able to get your scenario, or sorry, sensitivity analysis, Python lab working appropriately, extending the project one model, then it should be set up appropriately to do all the future extensions as well. So make sure that you have that project one uh, sensitivity analysis Python exercise correct before you keep moving on with the material. So let's look at an example of how we can add this scenario analysis, external scenario analysis, to an existing Python model. So we'll work with the dynamic salary retirement model as we have been, and uh, we'll work here from the one that already has the sensitivity analysis incorporated in it, and we'll go after the end of that. Um, so first I'm just going to restart the kernel and run all the cells so that we have everything defined to be able to work with it. And as that runs, um, then uh, we're going to start building out the um, scenario analysis section. So it looks like um, I need to upgrade my sensitivity package here. Um, if you get an error like this, that's indicative that you need to update the sensitivity package. Uh, so I'm just going to quickly uh, upgrade that. Uh, that should take a few seconds, and then it should be upgraded. Yep, looks good. Successfully installed, I got the upgrade. Now I can delete that cell. I'm just going to restart and run everything again so that we'll be all set up to add the scenario analysis. So now everything seems to be running appropriately here. 
Um, so I'm going to go ahead and start adding the scenario analysis now. Um, so with the scenario analysis, um, we basically want to set up these different input cases. And we want to have those cases associated with the scenarios. So a dictionary is a natural data structure where we can have the keys be the names of the cases, the, the scenarios that we're looking at, and the values can be the um, values of the inputs. So the first thing that we want to do is create these different cases of the inputs. So uh, I can create bad economy data here. We're just going to look at bad, normal, good economy and how that affects the model. And that is a very standard thing to look at in scenario analysis. Um, so in order to set up all the inputs, I'm going to create a new instance of the model inputs class, um, which will contain all of our input data. Um, so I can set the starting salary to a lower rate, 40,000. Um, I can set the promotions to occur less frequently every eight years. Uh, I can set the cost of living raise to be only 1%. Uh, the promotion raise I can take to um, 7% down from 15. Um, the savings rate, then we can bring that down to 15%. We're saying this is a more financially constrained person, not able to save as much in the recession. Um, and the interest rate we can put at 3%. And then we can assume that our um, normal inputs that we have as the defaults here at the top, we can assume that those are representative of a normal economy. So we don't have to separately create the normal economy case, we can just go on to the good economy case. So again, creating an instance of model inputs just here, now giving um, values which are going to line up with a good economy, an expansionary economy. Um, so typically, you know, more salary promotions are going to occur quicker. There's going to be bigger raises for both the cost of living and the promotions. Uh, the savings rate is going to be more because they're bringing in more. They can save more. And the interest rate is going to be higher as well. So then this is where the dictionary comes in. Uh, we can use that to keep all these things associated together. So um, we can do... Uh, the recession case and that's going to be the bad economy data we can do the normal case and that is going to be our model data and we can have the uh, expansion case which will be the good economy data um, so then we have all the data set up so that we can uh, go and do these these scenario analysis so then um, we want to look at what is the main output in each of these different scenarios. So that's years to retirement for this model. Um, so we can loop through the dictionary. And if you recall from our uh, lecture on dictionaries and using them more in Python, I'm going to loop through both the keys and values at the same time using the dot items method of the dictionary. So I'm going to do for case type, case inputs in cases.items. Um, so let me quickly just print that to see what I'm getting. Uh, and you can see I get the name of the case and then I get the inputs which align with that. Name of the case, inputs which align with that. So that's what I'm expecting to get. Now we want to actually do the calculation. So I'm going to call the years to retirement function um, with the case inputs. And I'm going to make sure that it's not 
uh, printing a whole bunch of output. And then I'm going to have a print statement so I can have the nicely formatted string containing the result. Uh, so it would take uh, YCR years to retire in a uh, case type economy. And I run that and we can see uh, for these three different cases, we can see the years to retirement in each of those cases. So that's already uh, um, the, one of the main outputs from the scenario analysis is just the results in each case. Now you can use that to guide your thinking in that um, you know it's going to be much faster if everything lines up with an expansionary economy and much slower uh, for the recession economy. And you can frame your thinking about you know maybe this is the normal case, but it could trend in either direction based on the state of the economy. So then the last um, thing that we can do with scenario analysis is also to take an expected value across the different uh, scenarios and their results. So we have to assign probabilities to each of those scenarios, and then we can get an expected value. So I'm going to create here another dictionary which is going to associate the same names of the cases now with probabilities as well. Um, so the recession, I'm gonna say 20%, the normal, I'm gonna say 50%, and the good economy, I'm going to put at 30%. Of course, with probabilities, you would want them to sum up to one, which these do. Um, and now I'm going to take the expected value based on these probabilities and those results. Um, so I can start from this loop, which is already um, getting the years for time and for each. Um, but I don't need to print that out anymore. I'm just gonna take that years for retirement. And now we wanna calculate the expected value. So the expected value, uh, we multiply each of the probabilities by the outputs and we sum them all up. So the easy way to do that in Python with a loop is you wanna create a running total type of variable so you can keep adding to that with each case multiplied by its probability. So we're going to start with the expected years to retirement is going to be zero, representing that uh, this is just a number we're gonna keep adding to over time and so it starts at zero. Uh, so then we want to take the probability and multiply it by the um, years to retirement for that case. And so we can call that the uh, weighted years to retirement. And for that, we're going to multiply the years to retirement that we just calculated by the appropriate uh, case probability. Uh, so case probabilities, and remember that case type here is the same key. And so I'm able to look up the uh, appropriate probability in the other dictionary by passing it the case type. Um, so we can look at what we're getting there. Um, oh, and here you can definitely see a pitfall with this approach. You do have to make sure that your keys match up across the two dictionaries or you're going to hit a key error. Here I called it expansion in these cases and here I called it good in these cases and so I get a key error about expansion so I just need to make sure that those match and now it's able to calculate appropriately. Um, so these are weighted numbers. They're not going to mean a lot until we actually add them to the expected years to retirement running sum variable. So then um, we're just going to do expected YTR equals expected YTR plus weighted YTR. And then I can add a print statement at the end. It would take expected YTR uh, decimal places years to retire. Uh, 
and we can also put in this sentence the um, probabilities as well, considering a um, case probabilities um, recession, chance of recession. And uh, uh, and I can format this as a percent and um, then the same thing over here with the expansion. Uh, change of an expansionary economy. So it would take 32 years to retire, considering a 20% chance of recession and 30% chance of an expansionary economy. Um, and a couple things to note in what I just did there. Um, notice that my outer string was single quotes, and now when I'm looking up the keys, I'm using double quotes. I did that intentionally, uh, because if you try and use single quotes here, um, oh, that may actually, no, yeah. It, uh, it gets confused. It basically thinks that the string ends, uh, the string that started here now ends here, and so it gets messed up. And so if you just make sure that uh, you use the opposite quotes, whatever you used on the outside uh, for the inside, then you won't run into any conflict. Um, the other thing is that this line is now quite long. So for readability purposes, it makes sense to actually split that onto multiple lines um, and with strings if it's somewhere within parentheses uh, then you can just combine them like this where strings on multiple lines will just automatically get combined uh, so now that is definitely more readable because you don't have to scroll over to see all of the contents of that print statement Uh, so that is how to implement scenario analysis in Python. So thanks for listening and see you next time.